I'm super excited and I want to say thank you first of all to our pastors uh even to my mom and to my dad, Pastors Vasily and Luba, for, for investing into our young generation, into our pastors, and, and pushing the vision that you are never too young to change the world. You are never too young to be an impact to your generation. That when the world looks at you and says you are a hopeless generation, God looks at you and says there's hope in this generation. And so super, super thankful for our pastors and Pastors Vlad and Lana for the rest of the pastors and the staff for believing in us and <clears throat> all this craziness on stage this was more so asked for forgiveness later I didn't want to take this one down I was like it's youth takeover you guys like the crates all right all right I was hoping for more reaction we have youth coming at 11 30 it's gonna be youth takeover I, I hope to get a better reaction there amen Amen. Amen. God is so good in this place. Uh, Unashamed Conference has been such a beautiful event. Our heart as HGY, our youth ministry, <clears throat> we are really focusing on our city. We really did not push for youth groups outside of Tri-Cities to come in because we want to build our church. We want to build our city. We have 40,000 plus students in our city. Jesus died for every single one of them and for that reason the blood of Jesus that was shed for every teenager it will be the teenagers that we fight for today amen so we are believing that stadiums will be filled not for football games but to glorify Jesus teenagers will fill stadiums teenagers will not go to games or to this they will go to stadiums to worship Jesus glorify Jesus amen and it's been such a beautiful event we sing last night the glory of God fell in the room we saw so much miracle signs and wonders people got baptized in the Holy Spirit just just high schoolers guys girls middle schoolers encountering the presence of Jesus people getting wrecked and the most beautiful part is teenagers coming in here for the first time ever and saying it's cool to serve Jesus I don't have to be in the world to have fun. I, have to, I don't have to be in drugs or in alcohol to have fun. I could be in church and have the best time of my life and not and remember what I did the next morning, not be hung over in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we're thankful for everybody's support. We did have three days of conference, so I am at about 15% with my voice, but we're going to push through and we're going to believe for God just to bless tonight and encounter people in Jesus name. Amen? Amen. Amen. I have a message that I want to bring to you guys <clears throat> this morning and the message, the subject that I'm going to speak on today is the fight for the future. Someone say the fight for the future. I believe the young generation, teenagers, are the future. I don't believe teenagers are the next generation. I think they're the now generation. I believe, you now Pastor Howe and Pastor Leah, they write in their book, Generations, they write that teenagers are not the leaders of tomorrow. They are the leaders of today. Another quote they say is, if you babysit teenagers you will raise babies but if you lead teenagers you will raise leaders I believe this church hungry generation the vision of this church the vision of our pastors is we are leading not an audience we are leading an army of young people that will look at their schools not as just good grades and good school or good sports but as a mission field to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us we will see a generation saved we will see the Pharaoh of drugs the Pharaoh of sexual immorality under our feet in the name of Jesus if you believe it shout amen. amen amen the fight for the future and I'm going to be speaking out of the book of Exodus if you guys want to turn with me there should be some notes on the screen you can pull out your Bibles or you can look up onto the screen and I'm going to summarize it a little bit <clears throat> Exodus 2 1 through 4 and it talks about, about this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw he was a special baby. Someone shot back at me, a special baby. And he kept, and she kept him hidden for three months. 
But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket, <clears throat> laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River and sent it down the river. And then we're going to skip to Exodus 3, 9 through 10. This is when Moses, the story of Moses, he's already an adult and, and he encounters a bur burning bush. God, through the burning bush, talks to Moses and he tells Moses, now therefore behold the cry, someone say the cry, of the children of Israel has come to me. God's saying, I'm hearing the cry. And also, <clears throat> I have also seen the oppression with which Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring <clears throat> my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Let's pray and then we're going to get into the word. Father God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for the testimony. God, we thank you for the lives that were changed. God, the lives that were healed, the lives that were restored. We invite you into this place. Do what only you can do. God, I surrender. I step aside. May it be your words. May it be your spirit that moves today in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, <clears throat> so the children of Israel the context, there's a king named Pharaoh. He's not that good of a king, very bad king. And he has these people, Israelites, captive. And in chapter 2 or chapter 1 of Exodus, he starts to see that Israelites are multiplying very fruitfully. Let's just say that. And they are multiplying a lot. There's a lot of them. <clears throat> and they also just don't like them. They, uh, Israelites don't like Pharaoh. Obviously, they're keeping him, them as slaves. And so, King Pharaoh starts to get a little bit scared. He starts to get like, hey, hold up. There's a lot more of them than there is of us. And he starts to get scared because he says, if a future attack comes to us, to Pharaoh, the Israelites might ally with the enemy. And if they ally with the enemy, they will overcome us and they will destroy us. Amen? And so Pharaoh, he's like, you know what? I'm going to be smart. I'm going to come up with a plan that can eliminate a future attack. I'm going to come up with a plan that can eliminate... Um, my destruction of my kingdom and what he does is he goes to a few midwives and he tells them I want you to go he tries a few things it doesn't work he goes to the midwives and says I want you to go to every Hebrew male boy young kid newborn and I want you to kill the boy because if I kill the boy, if we kill the boy, it will stop from a potential future attack on our camp. Are you guys sticking with me? And so as I begin to read this verse, I begin to realize and I begin to get encouraged. I begin to get pumped up. I begin to get excited because when the devil is scared for his future, what he gets scared about is not when just grown people are there. The first thing that he looks at when he says, I want to stop a future attack on my enemy, on my camp, is to take out the youth. That tells the church, that tells us, the youth are the future. The youth have the power to, re to remove the enemy from his camp, to begin to destroy the kingdom of darkness. Amen? So I want you to see as a, a logical standpoint, when you look, what is an immediate threat to your, to your kingdom? I want, Andas, can you stand up right here? Do we have a baby that's like super young? Just a super, can I have just a baby? No, I have it. Can you come up with a Fabian? You able to come up just a little, real quick. Come on, let's put our hands together for Fabian. This is super random, but. <clears throat> oh. How old? Two months. So I want you to see, this is beautiful. Wow, that's God divine. I want you to see Pharaoh is scared for a future attack. So if I'm scared of an attack, 
who out of him and this baby, two month old baby, would you be scared of? We, you're immediate. I'm like, the baby's defenseless. The baby can't fight back right now. The baby has no power. It relies on the father. It relies on this. But what Pharaoh saw it a little bit different. We see him as the immediate threat to us. But the Pharaoh said, if I want to stop an attack on my camp, I'm not going to try to destroy him. I'm going to destroy, try to destroy him. When we look at babies, in chapter 2, Moses was a crying baby. He was defenseless. What Pharaoh saw was not a, ba a crying baby. What Pharaoh saw was somebody that will answer the cry of God's people. The church needs to begin to embrace, and I love this church, because we're a church that in chapter 2, like Moses' mother, looks at Moses and says, Moses, you're a special baby. What's so special about a three-month-old? I mean, other, of course, it's a human life, but it can't play sports. It can't make it money. It can't make its own food. All it does is eat, sleep, and poop. It does nothing. But Moses' mother looks at this month, this little baby and says, you're special. There's something about you that's great. There is a, an anointing on your life. There's a gift on your life. There's something about you that I have to hide you from the enemy. There's something about you that the enemy is scared of. And so he looks at the baby and we see a crying baby. But Pharaoh knows something sometimes we don't. This crying baby in chapter 2 will be the person in chapter 3 that answers the cry of God's people. The youth are the future. They are not just crying babies. See, when we saw Aiden, Aiden come here. When we saw Aiden in Unashamed Club, Aiden was in chapter 2 of his life. He was a crying baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> he was broken, busted, and disgusted. He was defenseless. He had nothing to his name. He was addicted. He was a drug dealer. He was depressed. He was kicked out of his house. But this is where it takes a church that can look at chapter 2 of his life and say, I know you're a, I know you're a dope dealer, but one day in chapter 3 of your life, you will be a hope dealer. You will answer the cry to your school. You will answer the cry to your generation. You will be someone that doesn't deal drugs. You you will deal hope to people. You will deal healing, restoration to your classmates, to your family. You will bring your family, your parents into Christianity. You are the hope to this generation. Can we get an amen tonight, today? I love a church. That's a chapter two kind of a church. See, we are a church. It takes sight to be able to look at a baby and say this is three months old baby it's nothing it takes vision to say this baby one day will be a, a person that will answer a cry so it's see I heard a quote that said it's bad to be blind but what's worse is to have sight but no vision it's bad to see a crying baby what's worse is just to look at the crying baby and say oh it's just a crying baby but I love our pastor when he looked at Pastor Vlad, Pastor Ilya, 13 years old, say, you're chasing girls, stealing bikes from Goodwill, doing this, 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 and the other. The world may look at you like a crying baby. What I see is you're going to answer the cry to this generation. You will be famous on YouTube. You will have millions of subscribers. You will write books. You will release albums. You will do services in stadiums. You will do this. You will see schools saved. You will have campus revival. You will do... Teenagers will not be hung up on drugs. They will be serving Jesus. Come on, somebody. My God. We are a church that will invest in the chapter 2 of teenagers so that we can see them step into the chapter 3 of answering the call. 
Come on, somebody. You can go before I scare the baby. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for them. You guys getting something? I want you to see this. Ooh, this is good. Pharaoh was trying to kill the youth to save his future. We're investing into the youth to secure our future. So it's the fight of the futures. We're fighting for the future. We're fighting for our youth because this is why we ask to donate, to sponsor what's happening in schools. It's not cheap. Yeah, oh, you don't need pizza. Aiden wouldn't be here if not for pizza. Of course, God's behind it. The leading of the Holy Spirit. God says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. God's spirit was swaying. He was moving. He was looking for Aiden. Somehow, some way, put Gabe in the path of Aiden to invite him to on a shame club. But if there was no pizza, who knows? I mean, he was addicted to drugs. He wants the munchies. And so, pizza was the munchies. It's the fight for the future. Pharaoh was fighting for his future. Today we're fighting for our future. That's why we have unashamed clubs. That's why we have unashamed conference. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's worth it. The success of the devil's future will come at the cost of the future of our youth. There is an agenda out there today. A demonic, evil-driven agenda that is after our kids that is after your kids but I believe there's a church rising up like Hungry Gen that is also after our kids. We will not let them slip into suicide. We will not let them fall into failure. We will not let them die out of taking their lives. We will fight. We will invest. We will fast. We will pray. And we will see teenagers lay their lives down for the gospel. Can I get an amen this morning? Whew. We don't fight back by hiding them from the world. I want you to see point number one I want to bring to you. I got to go into my points. You know me. I'm going to preach. I could preach on this all day long, but we got two services, so I got to bring it to an end. So point number one is speak into their purpose. Moses' mom saw he was special. You know, when I see a baby, it's like two months. I'm like, can you make me any money? I'm like, you just take my sleep. No, not my sleep. I sleep good. But you know, the, 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 the dads and the moms, they take the sleep. They take this. But it takes a maturity. It takes wisdom to be able to look past the sight and begin to see with vision that this baby, there's something about the baby that's special. Something about Aiden. I know he's messed up. I know he's broken, busted, and disgusted. I know he's in a gang, and you know, you, ah, gangs. No, we, we don't want that in our youth. Yeah, we do. We want to see them here. You know, about 75% 70 of our teenagers in our youth ministry, right? actually, if you know, we see about 300 teenagers Sunday night, weekly, in our youth services. About 75%, 70, 75% of them do not come from a Christian home. Their parents are actually not Christian fight it's a fight we're fighting not just for their future we're fighting against generational curses i believe we are stepping into a time it used to be back in the day when the parents had to drag kids to church i be oh i believe in us uh, we're coming to a time where where our kids will bring our parents to church our students will be the reason that our parents come to know Jesus. Our students will be the reason our family tree is turned upside down. They will be like, my kid was a drug dealer. What do you mean he's praising Jesus? What do you mean he's an unashamed club leader? He's homeschooled. How can he be an unashamed club leader? Do you know about our Jesus? Mom, dad, come with me. Come to me. Come with me on Sunday morning. It's a little quieter than Sunday night. Sunday night, you don't want to go there. It's, it's chaotic. I mean, look at that big old mountain hill on the grass. And we're probably going get, to get in trouble for having there. It's, but Sunday morning, come, come, Dad. 
we're seeing students bring their families, their parents to Jesus. Such a beautiful sight because their parents are looking and saying, something happened. My kid was not like this. God is on the move. Amen. So she looks at the three-month-old baby and says, you are special. Vision. Sight is to see them where they are. Vision is to see where they're going. Sight is to see who they are right now. Vision is to look at them who they are right now and say, this is not who you are. This is who you're going to be. You know, I don't know about you, but when I see Tesla stock, when I see Bitcoin, when I see all these stocks rising up like crazy, I always, I don't know about you, if you ever have this like, just you sit back in the shower and you're like, why did I spend all that money as a kid on stupid stuff? Why didn't I just save it Cause I, and just invest into a Tesla stock or like Bitcoin stock at $2? I'm like, why did I want to go to Silverwood? Why did I want to do this? Why didn't I just invest into the housing market when I was seven years old? You know what I mean? You guys ever have that or is that just me? I'm seeing, I'm like, it's, that's, I'm looking at, no, Bitcoin, it reached $68,000. And I'm like, why didn't I? I had a thousand bucks. If I put a thousand bucks... At two dollars in Bitcoin, I would have been very wealthy right now. You know what I mean? I was like, and I, I, I always come to this point. I wish I invested when it was small. I wish I put into the stock when it was small, because now when it's up there, ah, there's a risk of it. You know, economy. It's gonna fall. This, 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 this. I do not want to be on the side of history where I look at teenagers now worshiping the devil up there high in the sky on platforms, you no know, serving, not serving Christ in Christless eternity and look at them and say, he was in our youth ministry. He was around me. Why didn't I invest into that? Why didn't I invest? This kid went to this Pasqua high school. Why didn't I invest into unashamed clubs? They might have reached him before he got to this platform of worshiping the devil and making secular music, making secular movie, uh, movies, this, 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 this. And I do not want to be on the side of history of saying, I regret not investing when they were small. Invest in Hungry Gen stock at $2. <laughs> I'm joking. We don't have a stock. But we do got a youth ministry. Come on, somebody. This would be perfect time. Put a QR code for giving. Oh, that would be beautiful. That's strategic moves right there. Maybe for next service. Invest. Invest, guys. Give. Maybe you can't serve here. But your finances can be this, your, your servant to the youth ministry. Maybe you know a business owner that knows somebody that knows somebody. You know we have someone on staff for unashamed clubs. That is not paid by the church. It's fully by a businessman. Solely one businessman is underwriting a staff member to go into our schools. One more business person all the way from Australia is going to underwrite one more part-time job for unashamed clubs. People are seeing the vision. They're saying, I want to invest when it's small because I don't want to see a generation rise without God. I want to see them go to high places, into the political arena, knowing Jesus. Into the medical arena, knowing Jesus. Into the sport arena, knowing Jesus. Becoming a president that worships God. Becoming a president, a governor, a lawyer that leads our nation to Jesus. Can I get an amen in this place? I don't want to regret it and I love our church it costs us a lot of money trust me they give me a budget we blow it every single time you know I'm regretting Monday morning tomorrow morning honestly so I'm, I'm gonna be sick tomorrow um, <laughs> invest maybe you're like hey I'm too old I'm not old maybe I'm too seasoned for youth ministry but you do know teenagers around you. You do know parents that have teenagers. Your Sunday nights are free. Take your Sunday nights, get into your car, rent a van, pick up students all around Tri-Cities, drop them off for church. Be evangelist. Maybe you can't be in youth ministry, but you do know youth and you can bring them to the ministry. Take a car, go. If you go to football games, tell parents, hey, here's a touch card. My kid goes to this youth. Your kid should go to. My kid's life has never been the same. You know a business person, hey, they need food and a lot of it. Come on. 
Can you give? We have spud nuts. Uh, uh, donate to us. Stores around us. Donate to us. B- different businesses. Why? Because even if the, we have stores not even Christian that are investing into this. Why? Because they want to see teenagers. They want to see a future that's not corrupt. A future that's not evil. A future that's not led by an evil agenda. A, a, a wicked agenda. But a future that's secure and rooted in Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. Point number two is invest into their future. We can get piano up. Invest into their future. I want you to see that Pharaoh was coming after the babies. Pharaoh was coming after the Hebrew boys. <clears throat> and Moses' mother kept Moses hidden. She hid him because what? This is my baby. Perfectly fine. I, I totally get it. I get, no, you want to have the baby to yourself. But then she understood there is a Pharaoh out there. And the Pharaoh, if I keep it hidden, <clears throat> if I keep it in my hands, this Pharaoh eventually will find my baby and take the baby. Eventually kill what's special about this baby. Eventually kill the anointing, the destiny, the, the dream of this baby. And she understood, I have to sacrifice my baby. I have to release. I have to pay a price in order to secure the future of Moses. Invest into the youth ministry. Invest into this church. Why? Because we are both fighting for our schools. We are both fighting the enemy we, that's why we ask to pray, because while we're praying for, for our schools, while we're praying for our students, there is a devil that is praying over our students. The Bible says, Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert, be on watch, your enemy, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. The Bible says Pharaoh sent out to kill the male baby. There is a Pharaoh of drugs. There is a Pharaoh of culture. There is a Pharaoh of sexual immorality. There is a Pharaoh of, of, of vaping, of drugs, of alcohol, of gambling that is searching for the anointing in your students, in your kids' life. It is looking, it is searching through info where I can find a teenager that is not getting invested into, that's not getting in poured into and they do have a gift but I'm going to use that gift for the world how many of the people in the Hollywood Hollywood arena into entertainment this this and the other they got a gift it's a God-given gift but the world got to them before the church did the world got to their talent before the church did the Pharaoh of culture got to them because they were hidden no don't go there it's too crazy no 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 I can't take you to youth why ah two Sunday mornings and I have to drive you to Sunday night again and then and then you have Tuesday connect group and it's too much time it's too consuming well if you don't there was a pharaoh that is still looking for them. someone is looking for them it's either going to be the church or it's going to be the devil the devil oh they're too busy the devil doesn't care. He will find, he's searching. Where is the young people? Where can I take him? Where is young people that don't have spiritual mothers and fathers that cover them, that invest in them? Because Moses at three months old, he was defenseless. He needed the care of elders. He needed the care of the older church to begin to come over the youth and say, no, I got you. The devil is not going to get you. I'm going to invest into you. I'm going to give into you. I'm going to pray for you. I will drive around for you. I will do this. Why? Because I'm not going to let the devil the pharaoh get to you before I do before God does I want to read some statistics 23.6 percent of 12th graders use illicit drugs 4.2 people between the age of 12 and 20 have admitted to binge drinking 80 percent no 90 percent of substance use disorders begins in teenage years one in six teens have used prescription drugs to get high or improve their mood. About 6% of parents confirm this, while 10% of teens admit it. <clears throat> Many say due to the Gen Z's problem with loneliness and their obsession with social media. 
Suicide, uh, suicide at Gen Z's second leading cause of death in the U.S. Between 2009 and 2017, depression rates have increased more than 47% among adolescents, 12 to 13, 60%, 60 among teens, 14 to 17, 46% <clears throat> among young adults, 18 to 21. The suicide rate for people aged 10 to 24 has increased 56% between 2007 and 2017, according to new data from CDC. For children aged to 10 to 14, the suicide rate has tripled between, 2000, between 2007 and 2017. Average age a child first sees pornography is 11 years old. That's before, that's before high, middle school. This is what I love about our church. Not only we're we building a strong student ministry, but we just hired on for Kids Zone. Even before middle school, the devil's trying to get them. So all the way from the baby to the Sunday church, we're going to begin to invest. They're restructuring, they're redoing things to invest even before middle school. Because the devil's not waiting for them to get into student ministry and then go there. So we got our bases covered as a church. All around from zero till you're with your hero. Come on somebody. <clears throat> we're investing. 93% of boys and 62% of girls see porn before the age of 18. The devil is looking for your teenager. We need to invest into them before the devil invades their school, their social media, their friend group, their platforms. And she understood, I need to pay a price. Moses and mother, I can't keep the baby to myself. Whatever I need to do, whatever I need to sacrifice to make sure my young baby sees a future. My young baby's future is intact. As a, us as a church, we need to invest. We need to give however you see can. If you can't make it, you invest this way. Connections, this, this, and the other. If you know people in the school, um, in the school district that can be of help. You know, we are having fights and we're having pushback against Kennewick schools. Principals, there's posters everywhere and principals saying your poster can't make it. Why? No. Pass out flyers, you can't pass out flyers. You, you get into the school, straight to the school, you can't walk around. The devil's coming after us. The devil wants to stop the move of God in our schools. We have to captivate them with Jesus before the devil captures them with sin. It's simple. We are fighting for our future. We are fighting for our future. Bible says in Proverbs 26, 6, 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I want you to see this. It's super practical. You're young. You're a baby. Bible says train them up when they're young, when they're babies. So that when they get old, <clears throat> they won't depart. What does depart look like? Divorce. Going away from church into homosexuality and go into this into this into this into this that's departing from the faith departing from a life a christian life <clears throat> so that's the verse let's reverse it how much less darkness would we have in our world at this stage if we invested more in this stage maybe the 50 percent Divorce rate would be a little less if we invested a little more here. The Bible says train them up here. So when they're there, they won't derail. We are a church that believes. We will not see our generation. The dropout rate after high school in church is 70%. 70% of teenagers leave church after high school. Why? Because youth ministry is more on loving youth ministry than loving Jesus. So when they leave youth ministry, they don't want Jesus anymore. Our church won't be part of that 70%. We will see our students, if they go to college, we won't lose them to the world. We're going to release them to the world. We're going to release them into college campuses. We're going to release them into the uh, college arena, into the political arena, into the medical arena. They will be presidents that serve the Lord. They will be governors that serve Jesus. They will be lawyers that defend our country with biblical godly principles and values. In Jesus' name, shout amen. Shout amen if you believe that. 
Amen. The fight for our future. I love our church. I know I said that like about a billion times. I love like when people come, ah, why is the youth doing this, 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 this? And our pastor comes and says, would you rather have them a mess here in church or a mess in the world? And I'm like, yeah, what he said. You know, with the chest, yeah, we're right behind Vlad. Pastor Vlad, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen to him. Invest more, okay? <laughs> what he said. I'm like, Vlad, don't leave me. They're going to eat, uh, eat me alive. I'd rather be here. I look at uh, some kids come out of our bathroom. I smell smoke straight from them. I look at them, they're like, sorry, Zach. I'm like, you're a preacher. I'm like, you're anointed. I'm like, you're going to change the world. Zach, you don't know. Oh, no, I know. There's guys in my, in my connect group. Uh, he hasn't came to church in the last like, couple of weeks. And i uh, praying that he comes tonight. And I told him, you're going to have to tell me, Zach, I hate you. Leave me alone. Don't ever contact me. Block me in order for you, for me to leave you alone. Because you're anointed. You're a preacher. I'm going to see you out of your drugs. I'm going to pray you out of your misery. I'm going to pray you out of generational curses. I'm going to fast. I'm going to fight for you. Why? Because I'm not going to let the Pharaoh get to you before I get to you. I will invest into you more than the devil will invade into your life. I will invest into you. I will pray after you. Our church, our pastors, our elders, our leaders, our connect group leaders, they will fight for our future. My God, come on, let's stand on our feet, everybody. In the first and second sanctuary. If you're online, stand up too. Come on, somebody. Come on. The devil is fighting against the youth because he knows if he wins, he secures our future. Let me tell you something. We are on the winning side. We will see the youth prevail. We will see our school campuses in revival. We will see a campus revival in every single middle school, high school, and college campus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks for watching this sermon. If this was a blessing to you, would you let me know in the comments below what stood out to you from this message? What are you taking home with you from this message? Also, if you enjoyed these messages, would you help us and hit thumbs up to this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get new videos every single week delivered to you on your YouTube app. If you go to hungrygen.com forward slash sermons, you'll actually be able to download the transcript, the notes, and the quotes of this sermon and the rest of all of our sermons free of charge. Until next time.